we will record. Welcome everyone to Sharing Soulful Stories. And today I have two beautiful women with me, Tamika and Leslie from Aloha Missions. Welcome ladies. Aloha. Hi, aloha. Aloha. Let me tell everyone a little bit about Aloha Missions. So Aloha Missions is a lifestyle brand that creates Aloha-based experiences. Missions are designed to positively influence and inspire individuals to create a better Maui that positively impacts Hawaii's natural resources and local community. Aloha Missions encourages the world to love Maui with us. Ooh, I love that. I'm so excited to hear more. <laughs> now I want to come and go on one of your missions. Um, so can we kick off, as I have with all of these, with what does spirituality mean to you? So Les and I feel that, I mean, Aloha Missions, again, it's based on our Aloha and Aloha spirit. That's the number one thing that for us spirituality means is Aloha spirit. And going off of that, Aloha spirit is basically something that was rooted in the Hawaiian culture. And it was this connection with nature, with your aina, which is your land. And it was with your connection with the stars and the moon and the sky and the ocean. And it was this natural flow of energy between all of those elements that the Hawaiian people, we believe, based their spiritual spirituality on and so it's what tamika and i that's what we think spirituality is it's yeah. this aloha spirit on the from the ancestors of this beautiful place that we live in in maui hawaii i love that and i did not <laughs> pronounce hawaii correctly i pronounced it the australian way no oh. worries. I love that. And that actually kind of answers the next question. And I, be, I love that. I just love that. I think that's the most beautiful, pure form of spirituality in a way, like just this energy that just pulses through everything. And if we can be in flow with it, then that's just amazing. Right. Um, I feel that that description maybe answers the next one, but, but I'm going to go there anyway. Has, has his spirituality always been part of your life? But actually, you. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes and no. Okay. Uh, and I obviously we're two different people with the business, but um, yeah, Aloha Spirit has always been a part of my life. But it definitely got stronger as we created our business together. Um, you know, Aloha Spirit also not not only does it include to me that connection with our with our earth, with our aina, with people well and um so that was always there for me like the friendliness and the openness and the non-judgmental part of aloha spirit um so i guess that's where it changed a lot for me personally um unless i i'm sure agrees the same is when we created aloha missions we started to really see the connection of our aina for us mm -hmm. and how we can better our lives by connecting to the aina mm -hmm. the moon the stars, like she said, the ocean. And so, yeah, along with just the friendliness and the love, it was that connection. Yeah, I think for me, spirituality, um, it's definitely gotten more as I get older. And I think it was always, you know, in my life, but as we grow older, I think you just become more in tuned with it. And I'm becoming more aware. You know, you just you just get older when you're young. You just kind of la 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 da 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 da. -da. <laughs> and the more that this connection clicks, and you have these little individual moments in life, especially growing up in an island, right, where everything is. I mean, everyone thinks Hawaii. They think oh, palm trees and and sand, and it's like what it didn't click until I started to realize what that connection was. And that spirituality just grew and grew and grew when I realized, oh, wow, that's not just a moon. There's something greater than this, you know? And I think that's as we get older and why we started Aloha Missions was to tap into that more and to share it. Mm -hmm. And that's what Aloha Spirit is, right? It's about sharing. Mm -hmm. It's about sharing this essence and this being for Hawaiian culture that pretty much made these island people so magical. 
oh yeah. I love taking I love doing these interviews because all the it's just so good it's just so good hearing all these perspectives and points of view on um something that for many is quite unseen or or not a, a felt experience something that they haven't actually touched and so I wonder um you you touched on it both of you in that it sort of always hasn't or a yes and no it's been there sort of thing and I wonder if there are any in you if you reflect upon your spiritual story and your spiritual growth into the people you are now if there have been highs and lows on that journey that have you know opened you more or had you questioning and exploring further what spirituality was for you for Take sure it away from <laughs> i mean <laughs> So no, I I just was involved with many different religious groups growing up. So at one time of my life, I thought that was spirituality, was you needed to be involved in an organized religion of some sort. Um, but as I grew older, like Les was saying, my frame of mind changed and that to me was not spirituality. And I grew into what we were discussing of what it means to us. And it was that connection. So I pretty much left that um, world of organized religion. And now I feel like we practice our spirituality daily. You know, I don't have to go to a, a place to worship. I can go to the ocean or I can go to the stream, the river, and I can pray and I can do meditate and do what I need to do to find that connection. Mm -hmm. So that's my story. That's how and what I thought um, spirituality was before. Mm -hmm. A little bit of the same thing. I grew up, grandfather was a minister. We sat in the front row at church. And then one day we just stopped going. <laughs> and I was like, dad, why don't we go anymore? He's like, I'm good. And the ocean became my dad's church. The ocean became where we would go on Sundays now. And so having that deep mutual respect for those religions and those structures, but just realizing like, hey, this is my own spirituality. This is my own truth, what works for me. And my family has never forced us to, you know, do certain things in a spiritual form. But to my dad, it was the ocean. And that was where he went to church mm. every Sunday. Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> <laughs> I think every surfer on the planet knows exactly why the ocean is that, um, is that for people. I actually just wanted to, um, within this, I wondered whether the birth of Aloha Mission was, um, you know, a high or low on this own journey. Like, what was it that inspired you to go, how can we share this with others? It was a very distinct moment. Was yeah, it? It, mm -hmm. it was. It was. Um, Tamika and I frequent a very sacred spiritual place here on Maui and it's called, you can call it Iao Valley. And it's like the highest of gods. It's, 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 it's a place that holds a lot of mana, a lot of power. And we'd go there all the time and we jump in the river and it's, and I remember this day, the rocks were glistening and we were talking about Tamika. I call her T. T. What are we like? What are we, what is our purpose here? Like, what is our purpose in Maui, what are we supposed to be doing? We were going through these transitional yeah. phases in life that we were kind of like, uh, and it was like a ping. We're supposed to share our aloha spirit. Like everyone knows Tamika, aloha, aloha, you know, like <laughs> Leslie, aloha, aloha. So it was that moment in that river with that glistening water and those rocks. And it was just the place telling us that we had to share these personal journeys of ours and bring it together to collectively share it with the world. And um, like everybody feels in their own communities, like, you know, how can we positively influence? And we realize positive communities take positive individuals. And the only way we know how to do that is to share that spirit that we've learned from all those people and places we've traveled and um, Aloha Missions was the birthplace almost three years ago to Morrow, the day after yeah. that we started it. Wow. So it's, it's changed everything in our lives. Yeah. That was, that was the high. That was that's the high. That's, that's, that's a high when that happens. That's amazing. That tuning into 
this is what we have to like with clarity like I can see that that just dropped in for you so that must have been amazing and gifted from that space of openness and connection and and all right I'm ready I'm here what can I do love it love it and I can hear how that's a high and that's unwound and unfolded over these past few years and um I would love to hear though how do you weave and this is a funny question when when we come to a place where spirituality is kind of the aloha spirit and in everything that you do but but how would you say you weave it through your life and through your work well, definitely. I mean, we're not perfect, right? So every day, Les and I, we call each other up and we have these epiphany moments, or you should say um, conversations of just real life things that are happening in our personal lives. And um, we basically go over how we can get better ourselves. That's our number one thing that we're always, always asking ourselves. What can we do to you know, that for that situation not to have gotten like that, whether it was a little argument with the husband or whatever, um, getting mad on, at, on the road, driving, you know, what can we do? And to me, that's what I think is one of our strongholds is um, really looking in yourself and being real, being real with yourself and just helping each other to be real too. You know, we call each other out on things. <laughs> we're, not, we're not scared of that. And and we want to help each other because that's the best, the best for ourselves personally and for Aloha Missions, you know, because it's based on that spirit. So it has to be like that. And to go off of that, I think how we weave it in our daily life is we're blessed enough to live in this beautiful place. And so any chance we get to jump in a water or just take a walk or take a deep breath, I mean, we're surrounded by plants and and flowers that you don't get anywhere else in the world and i think that's the second biggest thing is that when you get in touch with nature and it doesn't have to be in such a big way you know it can be like a minute you know i think it just makes you realize that there's so much of this spirituality and spirit that lives in everything whether it's a rock whether it's a plant whether it's a moon it's just it just clicked for us. And I think why, you know, with the business was that we wanted that to click with everybody, mm -hmm. but you have to let people find that in their own journey. But if we can give them a little bit, Influence. you know, of the tools there, yeah, then, you know, I, I, you, it just, it's this feeling and we call it like a na'au, which is basically this feeling in like, when people say it's your gut, right? It's this na'au, it's this spirit that makes it feel like everything is right. And yes. I think with Tamika and I, our spirituality, spirituality lives in there. Yeah. 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 I love that. And one of the ways I know I work um, with clients about helping them get in touch with that, you know, that what feels right, that what feels right. Um, it can often be like, if it feels good, it feels sort of expansive and like it's just like this and if it feels not so good it's like you know it's like contracting yeah. like, oh that doesn't feel good and yeah when you can find that awareness of your body or spirit is trying to tell you something here if you can listen to it um it's quite interesting the way the journey of life can shift and change Absolutely. that is beautiful can you um next share which it sounds like you do and you have touched on with nature. Um, but what advice would you give someone that maybe hasn't yet found it or is just curious to it, or is, you know, maybe experienced it once on a yoga mat and, and wants to find it again? Like, do you have any advice for someone new to spirituality? Yes. Do it. No, <laughs> um, I guess the advice would be really to come with us on a mission, on an experience, to feel, because feeling is where it's really at. You know, you can tell people things, but to experience it with us, you know, and be in nature with us, feel a plant with us, talk about it with us, and, you know, listen to nature around us. All of that gives that feeling and the connection to ancestors, to land, to, to each other. And so to me, it's, um, that's what it is. I, I would say to someone, um, 
come with us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Experience it on your on your own. You don't have to come with us. You can go on your own wherever you live, you know. Mm-hmm. Get into nature and and really feel and listen and let go of everything else, basically. Turn this off mm-hmm. and turn this on more. Like she was saying, the na'au. Your spirit, your spirit of you, your gut telling you more than this, you know, because mm-hmm. this gets us into trouble a lot. Mm-hmm. And, this. and this, the tongue, yeah. Mm-hmm. So turn it all off and focus here. Yes. That's what I would say. She nailed it. <laughs> That's nailed what it. I was Do that. Do that. All the wisdom in three sentences. The other <laughs> thing before, um, before I opened on to my next question, there's something I actually want to go back to that you said at the beginning, which was about um, Aloha and you originally knowing it more as a connection to people and that friendly, kind, um, non-judgmental way of being around people, which I think um, in our culture over here in Australia and a lot of places is not the natural way of being you know these this and this ain't good at being friendly and non-judgmental to everybody that you walk past so I wondered if you could share any thing around that that might be helpful for people yeah um you know I think Tamika and I when we do research Hawaiian culture was a very they loved everybody I mean, it was this essence of like Ohana, right? Of family. Everybody's watched, you know, Lilo and Stitch or Moana, (laughs) but um, it's, it's, it's real, you know, and, and Hawaii has a little bit of a complicated history with giving too freely and then everything got taken from them. But um, I think the essence is still there. And to understand that, um, you know, the Aloha spirit and, and this feeling of, connection to people and places and giving it freely that's the key word is that the aloha spirit you know especially with tamika and i it's this you're giving it freely without any expecting anything in return and i think that is the biggest reminder for us Mm -hmm. that we don't just give expecting okay well what are you going to give me right Mm -hmm. you know it's this ever flowing web you know of just like exchanging of energy you know and that Tamika and I have had business conversations because we struggled with selling aloha right like how do we put a monetary value on sharing aloha spirit you know and and we're after three years beginning to navigate it a little bit more um it's just but it has to be freely it has to be without any strings attached and I and I think that's a very important thing Mm -hmm. when you want to give spirituality and aloha spirit you can't be expecting anything in return because then that defeats the whole purpose yeah and to touch more on that too I mean just one key point I just always remembered growing up was you know a lot of times it's like somebody let you borrow a car or let you borrow their home it's like the hawaiian culture always left it better than it was given to them Mm -hmm. you know so they always looked for that extra step i mean it was a non-stop energy flow which is so beautiful because i mean to me that's the way the earth flows and a friend was telling us you know if you don't get money the earth is keeping track of all of your good deeds that you're doing and she'll give back to you and that's that's true with even people energetically you know if we just freely give without expectations like les said no matter what it'll always come back a hundredfold but that was their culture that is our culture is they always left everything better than it was if someone gave something to me i'm going to give you something even better you know Mm -hmm. in a way not even better but i'm going to give you something too you know yeah it just was it never stopped so then you have a flow of just love non-stop love that's the word love Love is love Love, yeah 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 and love without conditions love without everybody is as equally deserving and capable of giving and receiving it as everybody else i just i think this is beautiful i'm so excited to have aloha included in these conversations so thank you so much for being here And now I'd love you to just give people a little bit more about um, Aloha Missions and how they can 
how they can find out a bit more if they're coming to Maui and they want to find you, where do they go? Yes. And what does a mission look like? Like give us a little bit more information. Right. So you can check us out on our website, um, www.alohamissions.com or our Instagram at Aloha Missions. Those were two very active with those. Um, and basically, yeah, I mean, if you go on there, we've structured it to say we create Aloha based experiences that can range from taking you to a like to learn Kalo and Taro and, and how to maybe string a lay or make a, a lay po'o on your head. So it goes from that to, you could do a vision board or a dream board, you know, um, we're so variety of experiences of missions that we like to keep it open and keep it anything like goes back to our missions of positively influencing our mm -hmm. community and mm -hmm. the people like everybody has to leave there feeling better. Yeah. So, um, it's a wide range of things, you know, we're slowly working out the projects and the workshops and we've been working a lot more with um, kids here and those ones kind of touch us a, a lot more because it's something when you can inspire youth, it, it, it just leaves you feeling so fulfilled, you know, and I feel like in Hawaii, our keiki, that's the children, that's where it, that's where, you know, that's where you have the most to like hopefully plant seeds of learning spirituality more at a younger age, you know, mm -hmm. so, you know, we're here, we're, we're open to anybody reaching out to create, you know, we love to create. That's the thing with Tamika and I, it's, it's not this base product, but it's so expansive mm -hmm. that whatever you're feeling like you want to get from Maui, like Tamika says, you have to leave making it better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's like personalized. It's more personalized. You call us, you, you know, contact okay. us. We hear what you want to do. And another, another good thing about Lesson I is the connections that we have here on our island. And that is really powerful too. So if we can't personally do them with you, we, we could go with you and we connect you with the people that can do that experience with you. Mm. Um, so it's, again, it's back to that connection with people as well. Mm. So yeah. I love that. I think, oh, I think we've encompassed like so much beautiful stuff throughout this interview. So I'm so, so grateful. Thank you. Thank you for um, being here with me today. I really, really appreciate it. Mahalo. Mahalo. And what's mahalo? Mahalo is thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank beautiful. you. Okay. So I'm just going to say goodbye to everyone that was watching. Thank you for watching and tune in again for the next story. Bye. Oh, wait, let me pause.